Guys, the Switch rabbit hole goes deep. And this is crazy because at one time, I didn't even teach Switch statements. But Switch statements have evolved to the point where I could teach a whole entire course on the subject alone. But why do we even use them? We use switch statements because they are good at something called pattern matching. And to understand this, it's best to look at why we use switch statements over if else. In our previous code, we've been using what's called bool matching using if else statements. And all that we've been doing is literally trying to match strings to a variable. Whenever we run our if else statement, it's going to check if we have the word in it and it's going to evaluate to a Boolean. But with switch statements, we're doing the exact same thing, but we're not matching the Boolean. We're matching by a pattern. But before we dive into the newest and fanciest syntax, it's important to go back in time to what I call the prehistoric era of switch statements and even back then you could see how switch statements can be a lot more concise in the world of pattern matching when you need to match things by strings or numbers value types it is a lot more concise and a lot easier to type out compared to a traditional if else but it's confusing to look at a switch statement if you've never seen one before because there's all these words like case and break and I'm going to explain those to you right now. A case is literally just an identifier for the particular block of code. It would be very similar to an individual block within an if statement. It is there just to self-contain the chunk of code that you are trying to run within the condition and nothing else. But break statements are very easy to understand if you can understand one important thing. When you execute this switch statement, what is going to happen is this variable is going to be passed in. And C Sharp is going to try to pattern match it based on the string. And what is going to happen is C Sharp will identify that Cockerillite is indeed the case statement that we want and the code is going to execute. But what happens when we reach the break statement? What's going to happen is that C Sharp is going to exit. And this is very similar to a return, but it's not the exact same thing. A return and a break are very different in one key area. And that is a return statement is actually going to return something. A break statement doesn't return anything. It literally just exits the switch statement. And this is a big reason why people have kind of not used switch statements that much until now with the invention of the switch expression. Our prehistoric switch statement has hopped up on land and evolved into a beautiful modern switch expression. And just by looking at this chunk of code, you can see how much more concise and useful modern switch statements can be. And they function exactly the same, but without any of the annoying keywords. All that's going to happen is we're going to pass in our variable before the switch statement instead of after. And now we get to actually return something. We get to store our value into, re into a result. So no more break statement. And instead of having cases, now we have fancy little arrow functions to pattern match and run our code. And best of all, at the very end, if nothing matches, instead of having a default case, now all that we have to do is put an underline and it makes things 10 times easier to understand. And it is some sweet looking code, but let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's do some practice. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to create a old school, a prehistoric switch statement. Then after that, we're going to refactor it over into the new school switch expression. But to honor the prehistoric switch statement, what I'm going to do is create a variable of my favorite prehistoric fish. And I don't know what your favorite prehistoric fish is, but mine is the cockerillite. And I like cockerillites because they kind of sound funny. They kind of sound like Cocker Spaniel. But first things first, when we create a prehistoric switch expression, the old school switch expression, what we're going to do is pass in our variable into 
the parentheses. And this is very different from a, a switch expression because it comes after and it's in parentheses. Then what we're going to do is going to here, we're going to declare our cases and there's all different types of prehistoric fish. So let's just kind of populate them with various ones that we can pattern match upon. And in here, all that I'm going to do is just go into here and console.write line, and I'm going to just shout Helio Baptist. And if we pattern match upon this one, this is what's going this is what is going to be console log. Then after that, we are going to have a break statement that is going to have us execute out of the switch. Next thing, we're going to create another one, and this is the target. This is the one that I actually want to match upon, the Cockerillite. And what we're going to do is just put the name inside here, go ahead, uh, put it inside of the double quotes. Then we're gonna go down here, do a colon. We're going to do the same exact thing that we did before. We're gonna go console.write line. And within here, I'm going to go ahead and shout cockerill, cockerillite. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. It's just a prehistoric fish. Then what we're gonna do after that, we're gonna go down here, we're going to have a break. And last thing is we're going to declare a default. And a default is what's going to occur when nothing matches. And this very well might trigger because the cockerillite is a very difficult word to spell. And what we're going to say is something nothing matches. And we'll also add an exclamation mark just for emphasis. Go ahead, put a semicolon. And we're gonna go down here and we're gonna do a break and that is pretty much it. So what we're gonna do is go down into our console and we're going to say .net watch run. We're going to run it and we'll see what happens. And what's going to happen is it indeed is going to match upon the cockerillite because they are the exact same thing. All that we're doing in a switch statement is pattern matching. But you saw how long that took for us to type out. That literally took us forever to type out. And the beauty of the switch expression is that this is going to be a lot more concise and a lot easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, get rid of this whole entire switch statement up here. We're going to declare our switch expression. We're gonna have a var result. Since it's an expression, we're going to be storing it in a variable. And instead of passing in the prehistoric fish after, we're going to pass it in before. And what we'll have is a switch. And VS Code is, always tries to um, have you make switch statements, but we don't want that. You, do, you don't want a switch statement. We're going to make a switch expression and we're going to populate the exact same way before, but with no case statements. And first thing we're going to pass in is of course the Heliobatis and we're going to make an arrow and we are going to return a string. Now remember, because we don't have break statements, we're actually going to be returning things. So there's not going to be any break and it's going to be the same exact thing, but without all the fancy keywords. And here we're going to pass in our target, the one that we actually want to match upon. I'm going to make sure that that word spelled correctly. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass in Cockerillite right here. Then I'm gonna go down here and here's where we're going to create our default. And within our default, we are going to just pass um, no match. And we'll just uh, have an exclamation mark there just to, um, for emphasis. Then what we're going to do down here, and notice this is a lot different. We're not actually console logging within each and every one. And remember that if you try to console log in here, you're going to get an error that says that you can't because var cannot be void and console.write line is void. So what we're gonna do down here is we're gonna do something a little bit different. And I'm going to say, this is a, and then I'm going to go ahead and pass in the result just like this. So let's go ahead down here. Uh, I've already got .NET watch running and indeed, this is a cockerillite. And this looks way better than the switch statement that we had before. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.